Okay, today we've got an in-depth look, compare, and contrast of the Reebok Legacy Lifter Flex Weave with the brand new Nike Romaleus 4 Olympic weightlifting shoe. We're going to compare every aspect of these two shoes, dimensions, fit, feel, features, and how they work in the gym. So stick around. Okay, so let's start with the most important aspect of an Olympic weightlifting shoe, the heel raise. The Reebok Legacy Lifter has a 22 millimeter heel to toe drop. It's printed right on the outsole, 22 millimeters. So that is the difference in height between your heel and your toes. Having, having an exaggerated heel lift makes it easier to get in the deep squat position. You need less ankle flexibility, and it is of great benefit, especially for when you're doing a lot of lifts, uh, a lot of reps, a lot of sets, any exercise where the bar starts off the floor or anything that requires a squatting motion typically. So how does that compare to the Romaleos 4? Well, the Romaleos 4 has a 20 20 millimeter heel to toe drop. I confirmed that with a Nike product specialist. So 20 millimeters versus 22 millimeters. Can you tell a difference? I can't um, in wearing the shoes. The two millimeters is not significant enough to make a difference that I can feel personally. And I think both are within the range of what is typical on these kind of shoes, but the Reebok definitely has more heel raise than average, than the average weightlifting shoe. The other important aspect of a Olympic weightlifting shoe is just how solid the heel and the midsole are. So the heel, um, the outsole are, you know, the outsole is the part that hits the ground. The midsole is the part on the inside between the insole itself and the, and the outsole, uh, very solid. This is um, some kind of very hard plastic. Uh, it is a very solid piece. And uh, the Reebok product specs actually say there is a TPU uh, piece in the midsole as well for extra firmness. And so I can confirm these are very solid. You could basically probably hammer a nail in with these shoes uh, easily. And uh, really no different on the Romaleus 4. So it's also got the very solid heel um, using some sort of plastic. They've obviously done something that's maybe a little more interesting with the visual design here. And it's clear. Um, but it works same in principle. I will say though, the Romaleus 4 is a louder, noisier shoe. So this very uh, thin edge and the wide heel, this tends to make more noise when you're walking. It's, it's a hollow, higher pitched, uh, louder sound when you're walking on most surfaces. This is a more uh, a quieter kind of thud, whereas this makes more of a high-pitched sound when you walk. So if the amount of noise you make when you're walking in these shoes has any uh, impact on your decision-making process, these are quieter. But at the same time, like I don't feel like these are any less solid uh, than the Nike Romaleus 4. I think it's just the, the way they've done the flared kind of... Um, 
uh, outsole, I think that there's just more surface area there and maybe this um, concave area, that may be a factor, but uh, it's just a louder shoe. Um, again, you, it's an Olympic weightlifting shoe. You probably don't care. They're gonna make a lot of noise uh, regardless. Um, I will say though, there is a slight traction advantage on the outsole of the Romaleus 4. So wearing these side by side, I have a homemade lifting platform. It is plywood. Uh, my garage gym floor is concrete. There is noticeably more traction with the Romaleus 4 as compared to the Reebok Legacy Lifter. So it's easier to sort of slip and slide my feet with these. Now, having said that, I'm not saying this is a slippery shoe or that it's unusable. All I'm saying is the Romaleus 4 definitely has better traction um, than the, the Legacy Lifter, but it is probably not enough that you should, you know, I'm not saying don't buy the Legacy Lifter because of this, but there is a little, slightly less traction. Uh, both are nearly brand new, out of the box, only been used three or four times, so wear on the outsole for either shoe is not an issue here. And I confirmed that uh, also with an extra uh, size 12 um, Romaleus 4. So, uh, you know, I think that's something interesting. I do recall in the past, Reebok made claims about the Legacy Lifter outsole lasting longer than average um, and not wearing out as quickly and uh, as compared to other shoes. And quite frankly, that would account for slightly less traction, right? The firmer, harder rubber is not going to wear as much, but it's, you know, you, where you get your grip is from that uh, softer, stickier rubber. So just be aware of that. Let's talk about the upper. So that is the part that covers your foot. Uh, this is the flex weave model of the Legacy Lifter. So that's what this material is here, the, sort of the weaved uh, plastic pattern. This is very tough stuff. It's similar to what they use on the uh, Nano, Nano 9. Um, this will be highly durable, probably last forever. Um, not that you get really any wear on this upper part of the shoe either. Um, it's somewhat, you know, it's fairly stiff too, because, you know, there's some sort of mesh underneath, but the flex weave makes it quite stiff. The Romaleus 4 upper, in contrast, this is cloth. I'm hesitant to call it mesh because it's so tightly stitched and so thick that, uh, you know, it's just not really a mesh type material, in my opinion. It's different than the faux leather that was on the previous year's shoe, but, um, it, you know, I'd call it a cloth upper. Um, Pretty firm, supportive, not real pliable, uh, you know, nor is the flex weave upper. The other thing on the Reebok shoe is they've got all these various straps and things that kind of cover up the side of the shoe. So you've got the first midfoot strap, the other midfoot strap, then you've got this part that integrates with the laces, and all that adds heft and support to the upper as well. Continuing on around the back, You've got this rubbery part, it's labeled exoframe. So this wraps up around the heel to make up for more support in the heel. But this also, because of the size of it, uh, obviously provides a great amount of structure and support to the entire upper part of the shoe. And uh, you know, similarly on the other side of the shoe, you get the same thing. There's the exoframe and then there's all these various uh, pieces that integrate with the straps and the laces. So overall, uh, I like the flex weave. I don't know that this particularly has any advantages over the non-flex weave version of Legacy Lifter, but um, I haven't actually tried that one, so I, you know, I can't say for sure. Um, the upper on the Romaleus 4, again, cloth. Uh, you have less external things going on, so whereas this had all those little straps and things, it kind of makes for a really busy design. They've gone with something that, in my opinion, is a little more elegant. So there's some layered materials here, and you, you can see how they've got that strap runs underneath this material, but is still integrated down with the uh, heel of the shoe. So they've made it a little more stealthy. Looks a little cleaner, but you can see they've also got some very large pieces here and various things that, that make for a supportive upper. And then, as I've mentioned, this is pretty thick, not very pliable, uh, very supportive type of upper. Um, so uh, we'll go in depth on an upcoming review, the Atta Power 2. This is not at all like the Atta Power 2, which is like soft and almost like a, like a running shoe. This is very different, very thick and supportive. 
All right, let's talk sizing. So Olympic weightlifting shoes are the most narrow shoes uh, <laughs> I think you can buy. So this is a men's size 11, the legacy lifter. This is a men's size 11 and a half. So I went, I purposely did not bother getting a men's size 11 of the Roma Laos. I knew it was going to be a tight fit for me based on the 3XD. I wear a men's size 11 normally. I did buy an 11 in the Reebok because I wasn't really sure how it was going to go. I will say I'm now wishing I had gotten an 11 and a half in the Reebok. Uh, it is pretty narrow and my toes are squished in there. I can use it. Uh, and even 11, it's almost, it's almost too long for me at the moment. So an 11 and a half will definitely be too long, but I really need the width for any amount of comfort. Uh, 11 and a half in the Roma Laos 4 works great for me. And um, just to kind of give you a, a, a yardstick to compare to, let's look at, um, here's a Metcon 5 which is not known for being a wide shoe as compared to the Reebok Legacy Lifter. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of indication. This is 11 and a half, by the way. So 11 and a half Metcon, uh, size 11 Legacy Lifter. But then let's look at a Reebok Nano 9. And so the Nano 9, this is a men's size 11. This is awesome, super comfortable in the toes just because of that width. So there's more width and it just, it continues further down the shoe. I'm not sure if I'm capturing that right here, but just way more width. It just feels better. Your toes can spread out and really work. I, you know, and at this point, haven't tried a couple of these shoes. I don't know why they make these so pointy and narrow. I don't know if there's some performance advantage to that. If there is, I couldn't tell you what it is. And uh, I wish somebody would make a shoe with the width of the Nano 9 as a, as a uh, weightlifting shoe. And I'm sure... Uh, maybe if you know of one in the comments, if you could could point me in that direction, that would be helpful. So uh, it's narrow. I'm going to say I wish I had gone a half size up because of the width. The length, me, it's maybe going to be slightly too much for me, but I've got to have that width. It's just not comfortable to, comfortable to wear otherwise. Okay, so we talked about that very solid heel and how the heel and the midsole on all these shoes is a very solid material, very thick, solid plastic. Um, there is also an insole in these shoes that you can remove, but it's pretty minimal. It doesn't do a whole lot. It's very thin, but it's also very solid. This isn't, I wouldn't call this cushion whatsoever. This is very, very firm. And so once you've removed that, you can actually see the interior. This, that's got like a felt on it or something, but otherwise it is rock solid. Like there's no give in this at all whatsoever, which is what you expect. Um, but I just, I make a point of pointing that out just in case you've never owned a pair of lifters before. That is what you were in for. There is basically zero cushioning by design. Um, the Romaleus, Four is, of course, very similar. There is also a drop-in insole. Um, it's a tight fit here. Uh, similar kind of material, like this is the firm insole. And so, as I mentioned in our other um, review, the this year they don't come with two different insoles. So last year they came with a choice of firm or less firm insoles. This year, all you get is the firm one. It's firm. It's like, it's like plastic. So again, be aware, but that is, uh, that's the way these shoes work. They have very firm everything under your foot. The other thing about these shoes, because they're so beefy with so much to them in the insole, the outsole, the midsole, the upper, I mean, all these straps and, and, uh, and gadgets and things on here. These are heavy shoes. So a men's size 11 Reebok Legacy Lifter is 23.2 ounces per shoe. A men's 11 and a half Roma Laos 4 is 22 ounces. So 22 ounces. Okay, well, what, is, what does that mean? Well, that is pretty heavy. To give you an example, uh, my men's uh, 11 and a half Metcon 5, this is mid 13 ounce range. So it's, I don't know, 13.4, 13.5. Five, so you know that is um, this the uh, the legacy lifter is nine ounces heavier. That's like almost having a whole nother shoe on your foot. Think of it that way. Um, Nano nine, similarly, this is the mid thirteen ounce range. So you know you're you're adding quite a bit of weight 
when you go to a lifting shoe. Now, does it really matter? No, it doesn't because you want that solid stability and uh, the, you don't, you're not really buying these to be a lightweight shoe anyways. But I would thought, I did think I should point that out. Let's look at the forefoot flexibility. And there's basically none. Now, <laughs> I'm not saying you can't bend the toe on these. You can, but it takes a decent amount of force, right? So there's no, there's no preformed flex grooves in these. These aren't made for jumping rope or box jumps or anything like that. They're really made, you know, for Olympic weightlifting and squatting and things like that. And that's it. So there's little to no forefoot flexibility in these shoes, but it doesn't really matter. That's the way they're supposed to be. All right, now let's talk about all those straps. So the Legacy Lifter has the two alternating straps. So one goes this way, one goes the other way. That is hook and loop, AKA Velcro. Let's you get a nice tight fit. They've got these rollers on the buckles, so it's very easy to crank it down uh, with maximum force and really get a nice tight fit. Um, as we discussed in our other review, having two separate straps is a new thing for the Roma Leia's 4. So the 3XD had one right in the middle. With two, you get more options or you can tune it better for specifically how you want it. You can do the lower tighter or looser and the upper tighter or looser and having two different straps placed different, you know, a, a good width apart. That is definitely uh, a, a good thing, and that is definitely an improvement on the Romaleus 4. So I think, you know, they might have taken inspiration from the Reebok shoe in that case. Uh, laces. So the Reebok has um, five laces, five eyelets. It's got this one extra one here at the top. So if you had a really small ankle... I guess you could you could use this to get these even tighter. Interestingly, the Roma Laos does not have that extra lace hole this year. They did on the, uh, I think they did on the 3XD. I don't have them around here right now, but they do not have that on the shoe. So that might impact your ability to wear these. I, you know, if you have really long feet, but um, smaller ankles, I don't know, maybe, maybe this won't work for you. I'm not sure, it's fine for me. Um, wearing a men's size 11, but uh, that extra lace hole is not there. The tongue is not crazy padded. It's pretty moderate, and it's actually kind of on par. Um, I would say the Nike's got slightly more padding in the tongue. The, uh, the Reebok slightly less. They did dial back the padding in the tongue on the Nike this year. The, the uh, 3XD had a tongue like a pillow, and they've definitely toned that down a bit. Okay, let's look at the heel area on these shoes. So you can see they have kind of, um, I think Reebok's, Reebok calls this an Achilles pad, how this kind of comes up, uh, makes for a nice fit. The Romaleos has something similar. Uh, it's a little wider though, at least just eyeballing it, it looks wider to me. Um, the heel in the Romaleos, there's a cup within the material. It comes up to about there. It's very rigid, and uh, you've got these multiple layers of material to make for a very secure heel, which is, of course, what you want for lifting weights. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the uh, Legacy Lifter has that exo frame, this rubber strap, and this larger piece that's all integrated in there. There's also something, uh, some sort of cup in the heel as well. It um, comes up to about there. It feels very rigid. And then you've got the exo frame above that. Um, I, don't, I don't particularly have, I don't feel like either of these shoes give me any heel slippage. I do feel, compared to the 3XD, the heel fits me differently on the 4 than it, than it did on the 3XD. But I, I don't really feel like it's causing excess heel slip or anything like that. Um, so overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, with either shoe in that case. Okay, so let's talk about what do these feel like in the gym because ultimately that's what really matters. The uh, Legacy Lifter is of course a very solid shoe. It has the solid heel, it has the midfoot straps, and it's got that tall heel raise. Again, 22 millimeter heel to toe drop. And with all the parts being, being very solid, the shoe works as advertised. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I feel like I probably should have got, gotten 11 and a half, 
These are just a little bit too narrow in the toe area, but I can use these in relative comfort. Um, as I mentioned earlier as well, I do feel like there's slightly less traction with the outsole design on the Legacy Lifter as compared to the Romaleus 4. So the Romaleus 4, also a uh, totally competent weightlifting shoe. The heel is solid, 20 millimeter heel to toe drop. The outsole gives slightly better traction than the Reebok, even with this hollowed out part, but they've got the width. It is noisier for some reason, uh, just probably because it's wider and you get kind of this thinner area. It's a higher pitched kind of clapping sound when you use these. Um, but the uh, two midfoot straps, great. Uh, the less padded tongue, love it. The firm insole is what I always used any, anyways. I never used the softer, softer uh, insole, so I don't care that they don't have that anymore. And overall, uh, I'm pleased with the new upper. It's supportive and uh, it looks nice, which matters to me. So uh, either is a really good shoe, you know, and I, I think maybe you expected that. Uh, it's just like the Metcon 5 and the Nano 9, right? It's hard to say that one or the other is, it was one or the other better. It really comes down to which one looks good to you, which one can you find a deal on, and uh, maybe the individual sizing, right? As I mentioned, I feel like an 11 and a half in this might be slightly too long for me, whereas an 11 and a half in the Roma Last 4 is spot on. So, um, you know, good luck. Hopefully you can find somewhere to try them on or just be ready to return them if the size doesn't quite work out for you, which is quite easy to do when you order these online. Okay, so that was our comparison of the Reebok Legacy Lifter Flex Weave with the Nike Romaleus 4 Olympic weightlifting shoes. Both are very good. It's really going to boil down to which one looks better to you, which one can you find a deal on, or which one fits you more precisely. And I'm afraid I can't give you too much advice in that regard. You're probably just going to have to try some options for yourself. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. We post new shoe reviews regularly, and we will have more posted soon. Thank you. Have a good day.